Hi everyone, welcome to The Shack. So um, I'm quite excited to um, tell you guys that uh, I've managed to get hold of an Icom IC R8600. Um, some of you probably know, these things cost like two and a half thousand new, uh, even secondhand, they go for about 2000 quid. And um, in my mind, that's uh, way too much to be spending on, uh, on a receiver. Um, I managed to get hold of mine because a friend of mine had it and he, had, I think he'd had it for about a year and he, he used it, but mostly for monitoring airband. Um, and he was in the market for a different type of receiver, uh, which I owned. And, uh, in the end, I basically exchanged two receivers, um, for, the ICR 8600. Um, I won't give any more details on that and I won't actually name him. Um, he follows the channel and watches most of my videos so if he wants to make himself known he can but um, we both ended up with a deal that we're really happy with. Um, obviously these have been around for a few years um, and I, they've got a good reputation so um, me being well one of the few channels on YouTube at least that actually covers amateur radio and DXing. Uh, most people kind of do one or the other. Uh, to spend, you know, like I said, 2,000 or secondhand or two and a half thousand on, a, on something that re that's only received seems a bit much when um, you can buy a pretty good transceiver for that. So the idea of, of being able to get hold of one through an exchange was great. Um, and a lot has been said about this receiver already online, so I'm not going to kind of like restate everything that um, that's already been said. Um, but you know, the spec on this rig is pretty good. The um, so it, it covers 10 kilohertz, I think, to three gigahertz. Um, stability is basically less than 0 0.5 ppm per hour um, from sort of minus 10 to plus 60 degrees. What's really good about it is that it's got three antenna ports um, on the on the rear panel, two uh, 50 ohm, so you can attach something like a you know Wellbrook loop, etc. Um, one's on an N-type BNC, and the other's on a sort of standard SO239. Um, and then there's a third, which is a high Z 500 ohm on, with an RCA connector, so that's actually quite useful. So um, I had. Um, my sort of VHF UHF multiband antenna plugged into antenna jack number one for and was listening to airband and then one of my Wellbrook loops plugged into um, antenna two. Um, they do differ in terms of the um, frequency range. So um, I think and I thought, well, uh, is that yeah? I think that's right. Yeah, they do. Um, but you can effectively listen to airband and HF uh, at the same time. Um, uh, well, you can flip between those two bands um, by selecting the antenna port. So here I'm got I'm listening to I'm not listening to but I'm monitoring the National Physics Laboratory time signal on 60 kilohertz on antenna two, um, and you can toggle between the antennas just by using the touch screen. Um, on HF sensitivity is pretty good on AM. Um, I think if you uh, use the audio bandwidth filter, the, the six kilohertz filter, then sensitivity to from sort of 10 kilohertz to the end of the X band is, is less than five microvolts. It's less than two microvolts on through the shortwave bands to 30 megahertz. And then from sort of 30 megahertz to 1.1 gigahertz, it's still less than five microvolts. Um, and then from 1.1 to two gigahertz, it's, it's still only about just over four microvolts. So sensitivity is pretty good. Um, uh, selectivity is also pretty good. I won't go to the details. Image rejection is good actually. It's 70 dB to 30 megahertz. It's 50 dB from 30 to 1.1 gigahertz. So all that stuff's um, pretty good. I mean, for me, it's all about how the sensitivity and selectivity, how it compares to um, some of my other rigs. Um, it's actually okay on long wave with a, with a Wellbrook loop, but. Um, if we, I don't know, let's go to 5505, let's go to Volmet. So direct frequency inputs, similar to the IC. Um, um, 
Audio is pretty good um, for a modern rig, even on sideband. It's not as good as some of the older classic receivers. I was comparing the audio on this with the um, FRG 7700 and the 8800 a couple of nights ago, and um, the audio on those rigs is much better. Um, the audio bandwidth filters are quite good, so there's three sort of standard settings. Filter, uh, I think filter one is six, is on sideband is three, 2.4, and 1.8. And then if you go to AM, let's see, let's find, let's find an AM signal. So let's go to, let's go to 12.015. Which I think is North Korea. So filter one, nine kilohertz. Filter two, six. Filter three, uh, three. And then there's, and then there's passband tuning as well. So you can adjust the upper and lower passband, um, which is handy when there's a lot of sort of co-channel adjacent. Um, noise um, you can set the noise floor reference quite easily so if I switch between my Wellbrooks they're perpendicular so you get and still directional on shortwave um, you can see the noise floor changes slightly so you can adjust that quite easily um, and then the span you can adjust as well using the touch screen. I mean, all this stuff um, is out there, so I'm not gonna go into any of that in great detail, but um, standard audio filters then. So filter one, uh, filter two, six kilohertz. Sounds okay. Filter three, three, way too narrow. Um, so overall, I'm really happy with it. Um, I don't think the sensitivity of this rig on, on shortwave, so from 1.8 megahertz to 30 megahertz, is any better than this thing, for example, the FRG7700. I was comparing it, um, as I said, the other evening, and I, it might be something to do with the audio. Although, although for a modern rig, the audio on this radio is actually good, um, it doesn't compare to the audio on some classic rigs. And sometimes when you're DXing, the quality of the audio actually can help. Um, I think I was listening to Radio Tama on 4775 kilohertz um, and it just, the audio, it was, it was a fairly weak signal. So Tama can sometimes boom in, but it was a fairly weak signal and the audio on the FRG 7700 seemed, sounded clearer um, than on this rig, but lots of testing to do yet. Um, um, other stuff, so hit the function button. Okay, got the preamp off, we put the preamp on. Uh, toggle between antennas, the attenuator, uh, notch, uh, AGC, etc. Noise blank and noise reduction is all uh, easily accessible via that screen. So um, I've turned the preamp on. So if we now go back to reference, we can wind the install down. So it's easy to operate, obviously very, very similar in terms of operation to my IC7300 transceiver that I owned. Uh, only briefly, actually, I kind of wish I still had that rig. I, I missed that rig, but I part exchanged it for my Kenwood TS990. Um, so yeah, so you've got a sort of super wideband receiver, 10 kilohertz to, to three gigahertz. It is sensitive, although I just don't think it's it's necessarily any sensitive than some of my other um, tabletop rigs, but um, more testing uh, to do on that. One thing it has got actually, it's got built-in um, decoder, RITI decoder. So if I go to, I don't know whether this is gonna work or not, but if I go to, let's try seven, six, four, six. What have we, uh, sorry, seven, six, four, six. You have to enter it basically as Hertz. Okay, we've got a signal. Um, let's go to FSK. 
Okay. So that's the Pinneberg um, Ritty signal, sort of weather Ritty signal. Don't know if it's going to work or not. Let's go to decode. Okay, and it's working straight away. So that's quite useful um, if you're into decode, gritty decode. Um, interestingly, I'm pretty sure that um, uh, I've decoded some other gritty signals where the where the board. Uh, I'm just trying to think. Actually, um, wasn't uh, well. It didn't have the board. Sorry. Here we go. Turn shift. Um, one at one of the um, settings on this. Uh, oh, sorry, here we go. Board. So it's only got forty-five or fifty. I can't remember, but there was another. It was a pretty signal that wasn't forty-five or fifty um, BPS, but it still decoded it. But so there you go. Um, I use a piece of software. Or I was using a piece of software um, to do Ritty decode. Um, uh, which you guys probably, or some of you will be um, aware of, um, with my ELAD FM Duro Multi PSK, um, which is a bit of a fag actually to set up sometimes. Um, so to be able to do this just on the rig is actually quite good. So just something else in its uh, another little trick that it can do. Um, so let's go back to AM. Um, Go to scope and go back to fine. So, um, so yeah, so there you go. Um, there's lots more I can say about this radio. Um, my first impressions are that it's uh, excellent. Um, really heavy actually when I got out of the box it, it, I was surprised at how much it weighs it actually weighs 4.3 kilos which is um a lot because it's not very big um but it, yeah everything seems to work well um there's all sorts of things that you can do on it that I won't go into because it's all been done before um I will use it for monitoring HF um I'll tell you what actually it's um with the Welbrook loop um I recorded a couple of really nice um transatlantic medium wave signals uh 590 kilohertz uh, vocm in newfoundland and labrador and a uh, bloomberg radio new york on 1130 kilohertz um both up a sideband because there's a lot of uh, adjacent channel noise on, uh, on those two signals but they tend to be the strongest um transatlantic uh signals that come through on medium wave and um yeah um recorded a couple of really nice signals uh, using this rig so um so yeah so it's all good um there's as i said there's lots of other things that uh that, it, that you can do you can scan set up scans etc i won't go into that um but uh yeah happy with it so far i just not sure that if you spend two and a half thousand pounds on this radio that and you've already got something like a yesu frg 8800 or even an icom icr 75 you're actually going to hear any more uh, necessarily but obviously it's nice to be able to sort of see the signal uh, etc so uh, so there you go so um yeah but my first impressions are that it's very good more testing uh to do uh, in terms of its performance um not sure whether it's worth two thousand Five hundred pounds. I suppose the one thing I'm, I'm forgetting is that it's wideband. You know, if you're into VHF, UHF, it, it, it tunes all the way up to three gigahertz. So you kind of that's what you're kind of one of the things you're paying for. Um, I just don't think it's very superior on HF frequencies to some other radios I've got. But that's fine. Um, at the end of the day, uh, still very happy with it and. Um, uh, and it will get uh, it will get a lot of use, um, and it's it's useful to be able to see the signal that you're trying to demodulate, um, particularly on medium wave, on uh, medium wave DX. Um, I still do quite a lot of transatlantic DXing on medium wave, although I don't upload so many videos uh, of it because it's that's all been done before by me. Um, so in that respect, it is actually quite useful, but. Uh,
Um, so yeah, um, let's just take the span, let's put the maximum span. So here you go, that's the kind of thing that you're looking at. Um, turn your reference down and then you can, that's 50 kilohertz. And just tune through the band that way if you so wish, which I don't tend to do actually. One thing I'm used to using a spectrum scope that's large on a computer screen, so this is quite small. There's quite good resolution, so um, I tend to um, just literally go straight for the frequency input, but um, you know, it takes all sorts. The, um, it, it does um, various digital modes, which uh, I'm not really into, I only really do FT8. Um, but uh, so I haven't really covered that. But uh, anyway, there you go. So Icon ICR8600, the spiritual successor, I think, to, to the um, uh, ICR75, although there was obviously, I think it was the R, was it the R8000 in between? A rig I'm not particularly uh, familiar with. Um, but uh, nice to be able to finally get my hands on one and um, there'll be obviously lots of videos coming uh, on this rig. So uh, initial thoughts are very positive um but uh more testing to come so uh, which i'm looking forward to anyway so there you go thanks for watching 73